Hey guys, welcome to my garage. I am Zach with Wired Customs. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to pick the right alternator and setup for your flathead Ford. So everything I have in front of me here is all different options that you can get from Vintage Auto Garage. Um, you can get an old school style Power Master, both for your 59 AB, ABA style. Uh, we have an alternator for 59 AB and ABA. That's why I have different brackets to show you guys. Now these Power Masters are really, really nice. Um, they look the part, they look very vintage. They look as close as you get to a generator with still having modern um, charging and uh, simplicity of wiring up a modern style alternator. Uh, their downfall is they need a little bit more RPM to start charging. And a flathead likes to idle around 650-ish, and that's give or take on what you like personally. These, they like to charge more like at a modern car idle, like 800. So if you idle these a little bit faster, they'll start charging. That's something that you're just going to have to adjust on the car while it's running. The key is to put a voltmeter on the battery raise the idle until it kicks on. They are a one wire and they have to see enough revolutions to turn on. That's how it's capable of being a one wire. It turns itself on and off. They work great, they look great, and I just wanna give you that information as your option. I have a whole video on how to install these Power Master generators. Check that out, I'll put the link in the description. Now I love these alternators from Vintage Auto Garage. They're blacked out, they're subdued. You could put it on one of these vintage cars, either one behind me, and it won't stick out like a big aluminum alternator. I like that. For me personally, a lot of this is about looks. Now what's nice about having an alternator over a generator, obviously is you're gonna get more amperage, you can run more electronics inside of an older car. The stock generators can barely keep up with what they have stock in the car. If you add anything extra or go over to 12 volts, I highly recommend you to go to an alternator. I have a whole video explaining the whole 12 volt conversion process. Now these alternators, I really like these because you do not have to raise the idle on an alternator. So what we have here is pretty much a GM one wire alternator. It's basically what it is. One wire goes to the battery. That's how I like to set it up. Everyone's a little bit different. Uh, we also have another right here, another bolt on the back. This is going to ground the alternator. It's extremely important guys that you ground the alternators. These old engines, when they were six volts converted over 12 volts, and they've been around for so long, the wiring could have changed or done something funky. Um, even crusty intakes, you will not get a good ground off the motor. Make sure you run a solid ground from the battery to the motor every single time, guys. On anything, any vehicle that you're working on, make sure you have a good ground, battery to motor, motor to frame. That's where this comes in. Make sure you have a good ground for the alternator. Um, so I like to use this little ground point here. This is nice. You can know it's grounded all day long, no problems. Now, since this one doesn't need a raised idle, it needs a way to turn off and on. Now, if you raise the idle, this one would turn off and on just like the Power Master, but you don't have to raise the idle. Vintage Auto Garage also sells this little plug here. This is plug and play, guys. All we're gonna do here is plug this in into the back of the alternator in the port that it already has. So we're gonna plug this in. Now after you plug this in, all you have to do is connect this red wire to our battery wire right here. And like I said, my preferred method is straight alternator fuse than battery. Vintage Auto Garage actually sells alternator fuses that are high amp. Make sure you get one of those to make this even safer. Next, we have this. This is our ignition. This is gonna tell alternator turn on, alternator turn off. And we can run this to the power side of the coil that's because the power side of the coil is keyed. Make sure you check your power side of the coil to make sure it's keyed. So if that is correct, then this will be correct. This is gonna turn it on and off so you do not have to raise the idle on a flathead. You can keep that slow, lopy idle that a flathead comes with a stock cam. I love that sound. So it's great that you can throw this on and keep that stock, lopy sound. So the next step of picking the right alternator is picking the correct belt size. They had a couple different sizes of belts a couple different fan configurations on the motors. So you need to measure them, you need to measure them accurately. What we're not going to do is measure the pulley on your original generator or any other late model equipment that you have on the motor. We need to measure the belt, the exact belt size. So the next thing we're gonna do is measure the belt size. 
so we can get the correct pulley size on our alternator. I have taken this off of this 47 Ford behind me just so we can put it on the bench and get a clearer view of how I measure this. So what I'm going to do is simply get a tape ruler and we're going to measure the thick side of the belt, not the thin side of the belt. So on the thick side of the belt, I am measuring it at 5 eighths of an inch. So it's a 5 eighths of an inch. We're going to need the 5 eighths pulley. Now make sure you make that measurement on the belt and not on the alternator. There's three different versions available for this. It's the 3 eighths, 5 eighths, and 3 quarters. So look for those measurement guys. Make sure you pick the right one. Now on top of that, we have different brackets for different years. These are for two different style flatheads. You have the 59AB style, you have the ABA style. Now the 59AB style bracket, um, that covers like 1933 to about 1948. Even though there's different motors within those years, this style will still work. Now when it comes to the ABA style, this is for 1949 to about 1954, depending on where you are in the world, Flathead stopped getting produced at different times at different places. Now I'm gonna show you quickly the difference in the motors so it's easier for you to tell the difference on what bracket you should get. You should never rely on the year of the car to be the year of the motor. So I don't wanna overcomplicate you and confuse you, but what we have here is a 59AB style motor. It is not a 59AB, but the parts of a 59AB fit on this motor. The easiest thing to tell is where the coolant comes out of the head. Now you see on the head, the coolant comes out the center. That makes it a 59 AB style. And another thing to check is the bell housing. If the bell housing is casted into the motor, it is a 59 AB style motor. Now a way to determine if it's an APA, if the bell housing is bolted on and not casted in, that's a big identifier. Also, if the coolant passages come out of the front of the head and not the middle, that's an APA style motor. Now there's a lot more versions of flatheads and it gets more complicated than that, but that's the generic basics. If you'd like to learn more about identifying all the specifics to a flathead, I'll put a couple links in the description. It'll take you to YouTube videos where I'm just explaining the differences in flatheads themselves. Now what I like about vintage auto garages brackets over other brackets is that this can actually run a fan if it needs to. Also, you do not need to cut up an aftermarket alternator to get it to fit on the bracket. A lot of these brackets, if you buy them from other places other than Vintage Auto Garage, you do have to grind and cut off sections of the alternator itself to get it to line up straight to feed the belt straight. It's set up to be as simple and easy as possible for you to install it. So now I'm going to set up this alternator on a 59 AV style motor and I'm going to show you how I do it. Obviously, I'd suggest you to paint this bracket before installing it, whatever color your motor is, or black subdued to match the alternator. This step here that's welded on is the back. That's gonna be pushing up against the intake. The smooth side is the front. That's what you're gonna be seeing on the front of the motor. Now, when you go to install this alternator onto the bracket, it's important to leave with the connection up. Here's the connection here. It's gonna be facing up, so it keeps out of all the moving parts that are below the alternator. We're gonna mount the alternator behind the bracket, just like this. I'm gonna screw our threaded side in first. Then I'm gonna slide the longer side in over here. No need to cut any part of the alternator to get this to work, guys. It's very simple. And we can actually bolt this up tight because this is not adjusting from here. It's going to be sliding on the front of the motor up and down, and it's going to adjust that way. Now, installing it is very simple. We're just going to slide this over the intake right here. Make sure you run the washer. We're going to put the washer on. And here is our nut to hold this in place. Thread that on. We're going to get this a little bit snug. Now I want to get it snug enough so it'll just barely move with a little bit of tension and it'll sort of hold itself in place. And I'm going to put it all the way down. Now we're going to put the belt on. Making sure it goes down over the crank first. Now what's great about V-belts is they don't need as much tension as a serpentine belt. So keep that in mind. They grip uh, down in the valley better than a serpentine belt would if it was slightly loose. Now one of the misconceptions here is that if you get this tight enough, it's going to mess up the alternator. These alternators have great bearings on it. Um, they can run the fan with extra tension and not blow up the alternator. What you have to worry about is getting this alternator so tight 
that it actually messes up the water pumps themselves. We can put too much tension on the water pumps. So we're gonna get this up to where it's just snug, a little bit of play, and we're gonna tighten it up. Now, it's easier if you have two people doing this, because honestly, on a flathead, putting tension on this belt's a little bit more complicated than a serpentine belt. There we go, we got it. Now it's snug. And here's our tension. A little bit of tension's fine. If this was super tight and I couldn't press this, just but a tad, it's too tight. Remember, these V-belts can run a lot looser than a serpentine belt can. Now what's great about this alternator is we have this big dual intake on here, plenty of clearance behind the alternator. Now imagine this bracket be painting black or possibly blue to match the motor and how nice this actually looks as an alternator. Surprisingly, it looks way better than what you thought an alternator would on a flathead. Now, like stated earlier, you're just gonna connect our connection and run this to the power wire of the alternator here. And we're gonna run this to the ignition side of the coil. This is, doesn't have to be the ignition side of the coil, but it does have to be a keyed on power. Now that you made all your connections and your alternator's installed, you need to make sure your battery's good before you start it up. A bad battery can actually hurt an alternator on startup. Make sure it's at least 12.6 volts. If it's not, you need to charge it or replace it. Also, if you start it up and voltage is super high, 15, 16, that means the alternator is trying to compensate for a bad battery. So what you wanna do is make sure you have a voltmeter. Now a good running alternator is about 14.1 to about 14.5, give or take, depending on the situation of what's all going on on the vehicle while it's running. We wanna check the voltage at the battery and we wanna check the voltage at the alternator on that power wire on the back. We wanna make sure that the voltage is very, very close to being similar. If there's a big difference, there's something wrong in your routing between the alternator and the battery. Now all the alternators from Vintage Auto Garage are tested before they ship them out. If an alternator is not charging, check the ground on the alternator. It's possible it has a bad ground, it's possible it's connected incorrectly, and it's also possible that it doesn't have ignition source. That's why it's so important that you have a voltmeter doing this setup to make sure everything looks good. If you want to know more about identifying your flathead or 12 volt conversions, make sure you check out my channel, Wired Customs. Also, uh, a lot of that information is on the Vintage Auto Garage YouTube channel, so check them out too. Make sure you go on their website, guys, and check out their options. Pick out what option you like the best for your vehicle. Then make sure you get out in the garage and get your shift together.